Michigan State versus Indiana State. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why are we previewing a game where Michigan State is playing some no-name Indiana State? Well, listen up. I live like 30 minutes away from Terre Haute, and I, I root for the Sycamores, but at the same time, I also root for the Big Ten. So I'm kind of I'm kind of you know conflicted on this one. However, Indiana State is having a great season. They have some uh, you know 11 wins this year. We just talked about how important that is, especially for a mid-major team. They have their one loss uh, as well. So Indiana State's playing good basketball. Michigan State, for whatever reason, has just decided to schedule the hardest mid-majors possible. I mean, they had JMU at the beginning of the season. Now they have Indiana State. Um, I don't know if they meant to do that or if it just kind of happened that way. I'm sure that's just the Michigan State luck right now with everything going on. Uh, Spartan Dog, what are your thoughts going into this game? So right off the top, just want to say prayers for Jeremy Fears um, as he continues to yes. recover. Um, you know, absolutely. Um, just devastating awful situation but uh yeah no is all 100 percent playing this on purpose like this is 100 per- he, he grinded tape in the off season and and he was like these are the guys i want to play uh fun fact about this game this is the first time that michigan state and indiana state are playing each other since that legendary 1979 national championship game where magic johnson and larry bird faced off against each other Oh, so wow. just, just in historical context, they have never played. They haven't played since then. This will be the first time since that, since that matchup. So that's awesome. Um, that that's pretty cool. Like historic wise, uh, you know, in this game, um, what I'm looking for, I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking for everyone to kind of keep the, keep the rhythm going. Right. It, it started off bad as bad as the season could start for, for, for a team preseason, number four, all the expectations in the world. And to go out there and you lay an egg against a mid-major. Now, JMU's one of five undefeated teams left in the country, but they're still a mid-major, right? You, you should have taken care of business and, you know, losing to losing to a two team that outside of Kyle Filipowski is not, you know, super impressive. You have a ban. You, you you come all the way back against against the top five Arizona team. You're not able to close. You're not able to to shut the door on them. Um, you know, and then laying two stinkers to open conference play. You're they're behind the eight ball now. Um, they really can't afford to drop to drop a, to drop another non con non conference game. So they need to come in here with their hair on fire. They need to keep, they need to keep the rhythm going. They need to continue to push the improvement that they've been, that they've been working on and, and kind of cl- kind of get this done and go into conference play eight and five. It's ugly, but you know, you can, you can wipe your hands clean with the beginning of the season and it all starts anew. Yeah, and I mean, this is what Tom Izzo always plans, right? He always plans for the team to play some hard games into the season, you know, figure out who exactly you are. So that way you're not figuring out during conference season uh, and see how that plays out to try and get them to be on there. And I think Indiana State is going to be a great, um, you know, part of helping this team find out who they are because they're going to have to, after that big Baylor win, they're going to have to figure out, you know, can is this sustainable? Can we keep this going? Can we keep making this happen? Uh, can Tyser Walker continue to be a freak and just, you know, score outright uh, like nobody's business it's going to be really interesting to see Russ what are some of your thoughts going into this game yeah so uh, I'm kind of like you JR you know I'm being an, a native Hoosier native uh, resident of the state of Indiana I shouldn't say that word I'm going to get killed by the Boiler Express guys for saying that um, <laughs> I actually had a shirt growing up that said Hoosier by birth Boilermaker by the grace of God so you know we'll go with that one but um, but no I'm, I'm a big fan of Indiana schools and Big Ten schools so this is kind of a struggle like I want to see Kind of see both teams win, but Michigan State's been more of a rival almost than Indiana as of late. You know, you go back the last 20 matchups or so, it's pretty much even, you know, Izzo and Painter going after the same recruits. So, you know, I probably lean towards maybe trying to root for Indiana State in this one. But, you know, Michigan State has looked really good over the last, you know, three games, especially in two of the last three games. Their first halves have been like out of this world, you know, scoring in the 40s and holding your opponents in the teens. And one of those was a top six team in the country. So, I think they're going to need to do that again, though, against this Indiana State team because this Indiana State team, like you said, they're eleven and one. They're actually the second highest team in the state of Indiana in Ken Palm and in the net. You know, ahead of Indiana, ahead of Butler, 
um, ahead of so any other Notre Dame, of course, Notre Dame's having a down, down year right. and a, a downtime in the program. But, you know, Indiana State has this guy that's the Nikola, the Nikola Jokic of college basketball. If you just Google that, look him up. His name's Robbie Avila. He averages 16 and a half points a game, I think a little over six rebounds a game. And he is like the most awkward looking dude. He's got rec specs. He's a big dude. He's got this big old tattoo. Like it's like eagle wings and a cross or something. He's got, I mean, he just looks so awkward, but he gets the job done. And they also have another guy that averages like over 19 points a game. They shoot the lights out of the ball, right? They're like 99th percentile um, in free throw percentage, three point percentage, uh, three point attempt rate. So, you know, they're going to be able to shoot the ball well. And if Michigan State doesn't come out ready to play, I think they're going to find themselves in a ball game. Um, but, yeah, I, I lean towards Michigan State in this one, though. You know, it's at Michigan State. I think it's going to be a little bit too much of a, of a task, too tall of a task for Indiana State to get the job done there. Yeah, the shooting was going to be what I pointed out if, if neither of you guys did. Um, so on CBB Analytics, which we'll talk more about them in a second, but on CBB Analytics, they have the effective field goal percentage of Indiana State, 61.7%. That's in the 100th percentile of college basketball overall, like not just mid-majors, not just Big Ten and, you know, ISU, like overall, um, their true shooting percentage is 65.2%. Again, that is in the one the one hundredth percentile of college basketball. So, I mean, they are they're a really really good shooting team, um, and, and they they make their shots. They do what they need to do uh, y- to be effective, and, and that's a really really hard thing for teams to counter. Now, their weakness is some of their defense, right? Uh, they don't have very good personal foul efficiency. They don't get very many blocks. Uh, you know, they get a good amount of steals, but it's not great. Um, so if Michigan State's going to win this one, it's it's going to have to be taking care of the ball, uh, getting down on the paint, and using their size to their advantage, which, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's not been Michigan State being down low. That's what's helped them so much this season, as it has been Tyson Walker and A.J. Hogard, uh, you know, making the things happen, Jordan Akins, all those guys, Hall, all those guys that you want to talk about. Uh, but it is going to be interesting to see, can Michigan State get down on the block, make things happen in the paint, get the paint uh, points up, so that way they beat ISU. I tend to think they will. I think Tom Izzo is too good of a coach to lose to an Indiana State team. Uh, I'm not trying to disparage in the state. I think they're having a great season and I am, am uh, looking forward to continue to watch them. But at the end of the day, I think Tom Izzo, Tyson Walker, AJ Hogar, I, I just think those guys are going to be too much and they're going to ultimately win this one. Uh, Spartan Dog, I assume you agree in picking Michigan State to win. Yeah. I mean, look, as much as a test, as much of a test this is, right, for, uh, for, for Michigan State, and, and it is a test, let's, let's be clear. This is a good, good basketball team. And, you know, we I'm not sure of Jackson Kohler's status. I'm not sure a lot of people are. Last we saw him, he was back in a boot. So we're not sure if he's going to be back for Saturday. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not very confident in Mati Sissoko. Uh, so I think Avila's gonna be able to get his. But as much as a test that this is for for Michigan State, this is this is also like a major, major test for Indiana State. I mean, they've only played one other uh, high major team, which is Alabama, who is not as good as they were last year, and they got the doors blown off of them. Right. So you know, I I tend to think that you know this this eleven and one record it it's it's impressive. The stats are impressive. They speak for themselves, right? You're only, you know, you can only play the schedule in front of you, but it it's a little tiny bit Mickey Mousey. We want to say that, right? Yeah. So I, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. Indiana State's a great basketball. T- they're a great team. You know, they're going to go. They're probably a tournament team as it stands right now, but I just don't, you know, I, I have, I have faith that Michigan State is going to be able to keep the momentum that they've been that they've collected over the past three games and going in into conference play. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and you know, mid majors are better now than I think they have been. Uh, some of them because of the transfer portal and things like that that really have helped people out. However, I don't think Indiana State has risen 
to, you know, me trusting in them like I would trust in like a Florida Atlantic or somebody like that, right? I'm not going to trust them to be able to take down some of these big dogs. Uh, when I was watching Florida Atlantic versus Illinois earlier this year, I, I honestly thought Florida Atlantic could have won that game. Now, Illinois eventually pulled it out. Um, however, you know, it's one of those games where you could you could see Florida Atlantic getting that win. Um, Russ, you, your buddy, your buddy's here, Dylan. Dude, yeah, yeah, Russ I saw that. Again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now put some respect on Fort Atlantic. That's that's coming off a of Final Four oh, yeah. Fort Atlantic team. So you know they're not just any mid major either. Now, no, they're not. But, uh, and that's and that's what I'm saying. Like I, I've not seen this level of success for ISU like year over year to make me t- continue to believe in them. Right? Like I. Yeah. So, but who knows? This could be the start. We'll see. I still think Michigan State's going to get it done, but but I'm rooting for Indiana State the rest of the season. I want to see them do well. Um, yeah, you know, mid majors I love to see, and then of course Indiana. I'm always going to root for Indiana schools. So, and you you mentioned some numbers on CBB. Speaking of the numbers, do you guys know what their net rating is or net ranking? I, I didn't do not. Just look that up. What is it? They're they're actually 23 in the net. So they're 59 in Ken Palm, but they're 23 in the net where Michigan State's at 35. So this is actually technically, according to Net, a quad one game, even though it's a home game for Michigan State. So Michigan State, you know, I think they will win this game. And should they win this game, they're going to be big Indiana State fans too because they want to see that stay a quad one win. And obviously they're big Baylor fans. And so if they can get Baylor and Indiana State to have a good season, you know, they at least have a couple non-con wins that they can point to, you know, after some of the struggles that they've had in the other games. So. That'd be one of those quad one wins where, like, you see it and you're like, wait, I'm not counting the yeah. ones going back. Like, oh, wait, Indiana State was a quad one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happens every now and then. So, uh, thanks for listening to the Big Ten Huddle. Please do like and subscribe. We appreciate that. If this was your first time listening, we are the Big Ten Huddle. We cover all things Big Ten football and basketball. We have a long episode every Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all at nine o'clock. So, come in, check us out. Get in the chat. Let us know what you're thinking. We would love to have you join us and learn more about the Big Tips.